So we are told that uh, the sketch below is for a graph f of x is equals to minus x squared uh, minus 6x plus 7. And then c is the y-intercept of f, a and b are the x-intercepts of f, and then d is some point on f. And then 6.1 says um, calculate the coordinates of e, the turning point of f. Uh, relatively easy, we know that the x of tp turning point is equal to minus b divided by 2a right so from my equation we know that um, a will be minus 1 and then b will be minus 6 and then c will be 7 so minus b will be equal will be minus um, minus 6 and then a is minus 1, right? So we're going to have minus 1 there. So x of gp will be equals to uh, 6 divided by minus 2, uh, which is equals to minus 3. And then that makes sense because x of gp uh, is on the negative uh, x, right? Because uh, that's where e is situated. So we're going to have... Um, f of uh, minus 3 is equal to minus minus 3 squared minus 6 multiplied by minus 3 plus 7. So um, I'm just going to put that in my calculator and get the answer so that uh, we don't waste our precious time. So we have minus minus 3 squared uh, minus 6 multiplied by minus 3 plus 7 which is equal to 16 so the coordinates of e is minus 3 and 16 and then 6.2 says determine the value of k k is the y value of d right because d is minus 5 and k this is our x and this is our y so it's gonna we're gonna substitute minus 5 into f of x so we're going to have uh, f of minus 5 is equal to minus uh, minus 5 squared uh, minus 6 multiplied by minus 5 plus 7. And we are expecting uh, that value of k to be less than 16, maybe around 15 or 14 because it's just slightly below e. So if I put that in my calculator, uh, it is giving me uh, 12, which is not too far away from 16, but I was not right also. So we have f of minus 5 is equal to 12. So k is equal to 12, right? And then our coordinate d is made out of uh, minus 5 and 12. And then uh, 6.3 says uh, determine the equation of the straight line passing through c and d. So fine, uh, let's make it relatively easy. Uh, we know that uh, the coordinate of D is minus 5 and 12, right? And then the coordinates of C, uh, C is um, a y-intercept, it's 0 and uh, some y, right? So let cal let's calculate uh, the, the y value of C so that we can use um, the gradient of uh, C, D to calculate uh, the line that passes through. So we're going to say um, y intercept uh, x equals to 0, right? So we're going to have y equals to uh, minus 0 squared minus 6 multiplied by 0 uh, plus 7. So we have y equals to 0, uh, 0 <laughs> plus 7. So uh, c is just basically uh, 0 and 7, right? So we can calculate the gradient from there. So we know that the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So which point are we choosing as uh, point 2 and which point are we choosing as point 1? So let's just take d to be point 2, right? So this will, this will be x2, this will be y2, this will be x1, this will be y1. So we're going to have... Um, 12 uh, minus 7 uh, divided by minus 5 uh, minus 0. So we have 5 uh, divided by minus 5, which is equal to 
uh, minus 1. So up to so far, we know that y equals to mx plus c, uh, but m is equals to minus 1, so we have minus x plus c. Uh, plus c. Now what we are left with is to determine the value of c, right? So we can choose either point c and d. Uh, so let's choose c because c, uh, it has all positive values, so it's easy to <laughs> navigate through c compared to d. So uh, the y is 7, uh, which is equal to uh, minus x. x is 0 and then uh, plus c so c is just basically 7 which makes sense because the y intercept of the line that is passing through and uh, through c and d uh, will be the same y intercept of our graph of fx right so we're going to have y equals to minus x uh, plus uh, 7 uh, which makes a bit of sense so let's move ahead and do 6.4 uh, 6.4 says a tangent parallel to CD uh, touches F at P, determine the coordinates of P. So if it touches, uh, if it's parallel to CD, then it means that M of tangent is also equals to minus 1. And then our question says, uh, let's find uh, the coordinates of P, right? So this is how you do this kind of question. You derivate f of x and then you equate to the gradient because when you derivate, you find in the slope, right? So we're going to say f uh, prime x is equal to minus 2x uh, minus 6 and then the 7 is going to fall off and this is supposed to be equal to minus 1 because it's the gradient at that point. So we're going to say uh, minus 2x is equal to minus 1 uh, plus c g c, right? So we're going to have... Um, x equals to 5 divided by minus 2. Oh my goodness, I don't like dealing with fractions. So now we have x of p, which is 5 divided by minus 2. Uh, we can substitute it into uh, our main equation, f of x, right? So we're going to say f of um, uh, minus 5 divided by 2 is equals to minus uh, 5 divided by minus 2 squared uh, minus 6 multiplied by minus 5 divided by uh, 2 uh, plus 7 and then let me put that in my calculator and see what that gives me um, just hold on a sec and that is giving me um, uh, f of f of uh, minus 5 divided by 2 is equal to 63 uh, divided by 4 right um, and then let's carry on uh, we have 6.5 that is saying for which values is uh, f of x minus 12 greater than zero like i've said i don't deal with fractions and i don't deal with uh, the graph i deal with the equations right so in place of f of x i'm gonna put f of x and then i'll solve it algebraically because i don't want to see hey switch the graph or rotate it 360 degrees <laughs> i don't want to do any of that stuff so we're gonna say in place of f of x uh, we're gonna have um minus x squared uh, minus 6x uh, plus 7 minus 12 uh, greater than zero and then this is what we're gonna solve we're gonna find the values of x for which this is true so um we're gonna have uh, minus x squared minus 6x uh, plus 7 minus 12 i think that is supposed to be uh, minus 5 right and then uh yeah indeed so we have minus 5 greater than zero if we multiply everything by uh, minus 1 we're gonna get uh, x squared plus 6x um plus 5 uh, greater than 0 and then okay now we can see x squared uh, plus 6x plus 5 equals to 0 so here we can see uh, we want our critical uh, values right and then okay if we solve this I'll, I'll, I'll explain why I'm doing this Let, let's just solve it first so if we um, uh, factorize this we're gonna get x plus 5 multiplied by x uh, plus 1 equals to 0 so x equals to minus 5 or x equals to minus 1 and then um 
we know that our critical value is minus five and minus one. So this is where it gets interesting. So we have two possible uh, answers, right? Uh, one of the possible answer is uh, minus five and then x uh, and then we have minus one. And the other possible values is x uh, being greater than uh, minus one or x uh, being less than minus five so these are two possible scenarios so uh, this is how i advise people to do it right uh, we come to the uh, to the first possible scenario which says that x is between minus five and minus one right and we pick a random number between uh, that range right so between minus five and minus one we have minus four minus three so let's just take uh, minus two right uh, so if we take minus two uh, so if we say um, f of minus 2 minus 12 right and then this is greater than 0 then uh, this solution is the one we're gonna take and then if we take minus 2 and then it is not uh, greater than 0 then uh, we're gonna take uh, the other possible solution right so if I go ahead and do that I'm gonna have um uh minus uh, minus two squared minus six multiplied by minus two uh plus seven uh, minus twelve and then uh so we're gonna have uh, minus uh, minus two squared okay uh minus two squared uh minus six multiplied by minus two uh plus seven minus twelve and then this is three and three is greater than zero right so our first uh, probable solution is the true one so we're gonna see that um x uh, lies uh, between minus five and uh, minus one if we got a negative value we're gonna know that it's not true so it's the other possible scenario